the cold whisper of the Arctic, unraveling the mystery of the Kalapalik. The Kalapalik, an enigmatic entity of Inuit folklore, has long haunted the icy waters of the Arctic. Described as a green-skinned humanoid with flowing hair and elongated nails, this creature's origins are as murky as the depths it inhabits. Legends whisper that the Kalapalik preys upon the curious and the disobedient, dragging them beneath the frigid waves, never to be seen again. The resurgence of mysterious disappearances near the Arctic coastline has sparked renewed interest in the Kalapalik. Modern investigators, armed with advanced technology and a penchant for the absurd, have set out to determine whether this mythological menace holds any water. Is the Kalapalik merely a cautionary tale? Or is there something far more sinister lurking beneath the surface? My journey into the shadowy realm of the Kalapalik began with a series of inexplicable incidents during a childhood visit to an Inuit village. A local elder's tales of the creature's haunting hum, which allegedly lured wayward children to their watery doom, left an indelible mark on my young mind. Years later, as a seasoned investigative journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner, I felt compelled to unravel the truth behind these chilling stories. Armed with skepticism, a magnifying glass, and a flotation device, I embarked on an expedition to uncover the reality, or the ruse, of the Kalapalik. This investigation is not just about demystifying a legend, but about confronting my childhood fears with the tools of modern journalism. The Kalapalik's ancient lineage supposedly dates back to the Pleistocene epoch, a time when mammoths roamed and humanity's ancestors were just learning to play with fire. According to dubious translations of equally dubious Inuit cave paintings, the Kalapalik has always lurked in the icy waters, its green skin a testament to an evolutionary need for camouflage among algae and seaweed. How such a creature survived the Ice Age, much less the advent of reality TV remains one of nature's many baffling mysteries. Paleogenomic evidence, or the lack thereof, continues to stump scientists and cryptozoologists alike. While the bones of countless prehistoric creatures have been unearthed, the Kalapalik's remains seem to have a Houdini-like talent for evasion. A single strand of green hair, found wrapped around an ancient fishhook, has sparked heated debates. Is it the key to understanding this aquatic enigma, or merely a leftover from an early Halloween costume? The Kalapalik has made quite a splash in Inuit culture, serving as a wet blanket on many a child's adventurous spirit. Stories of the creature's eerie hum, capable of luring children to a watery doom, have been passed down through generations. These tales not only served as effective bedtime deterrents, but also inspired a range of creative endeavors, from bone-chilling lullabies to puppet shows that make Sesame Street look like Game of Thrones. The Kalapalik's general anatomy is a marvel of evolutionary ingenuity, or a prank by Mother Nature. Descriptions vary, but most agree on a humanoid form with scaly green skin, long hair that might qualify for a shampoo commercial, and nails perfect for an underwater manicure. The creature's eyes, often described as hauntingly beautiful or just plain haunting, are said to glow like bioluminescent algae in the Arctic depths. When compared to other known species, the Kalapalik shares a curious resemblance to the deep-sea anglerfish particularly in its method of luring prey. Both creatures use a form of bioluminescence. The anglerfish with its glowing lure and the calipalic with its hypnotic hum. Additionally, its green skin and aquatic adaptations suggest a distant kinship with the common algae found in its frigid habitat. Perhaps the calipalic is what happens when seaweed decides it's tired of being low on the food chain. Among the Kalapalik's unique attributes is its reputed ability to survive both in and out of the water, a feature that has stymied biologists and given hydrophobes nightmares. Its hum, described as a blend of whale song and a siren's call, seems to have a psionic quality capable of influencing human behavior. This hum, coupled with unparalleled skill in hide-and-seek, 
makes the Kalapalak not only a biological curiosity, but also a contender for the world's most elusive mythological creature. The Kalapalak society, if one can call it that, operates on principles that would baffle both sociologists and marine biologists. It appears they form loosely knit communities within underwater caves, structured around a mix of individualistic scavenging and communal child scaring sessions. There's a rumor that Kalapalak holds annual gatherings to compare humming techniques and swap stories about the most frightened children they've encountered. A sort of aquatic, terror-themed TED Talk. Typical behaviors of the Kalapalak include stealthy swimming, incessant hair grooming, to maintain that terrifying, yet alluring appearance, and practicing their hypnotic hums. Social interactions are rare and often limited to synchronized swimming performances, a cultural ritual believed to strengthen bonds and fine-tune child-luring skills. Kalapalak are solitary hunters but occasionally come together to share tips on the most effective ways to create those ominous, haunting hums. Leadership among the Kalapalak is determined by the length of one's hair and the intensity of one's hum. The leader, often referred to as the maestro, orchestrates the hums during group hunts and presides over the annual gatherings. Beneath the maestro are the tenors and baritones, ranked by their vocal prowess, while the basses handle more menial tasks like cave maintenance and scouting for new, unsuspecting coastal villages. The Kalapalak possess a range of abilities that make them formidable and fascinating. Their most notable power is their hypnotic hum, a sound that can induce a trance-like state in children, luring them toward the water. Additionally, they exhibit remarkable physical strength and agility underwater, rivaling the speed and maneuverability of a dolphin on caffeine. The Kalapalax hum is generated through a unique vocal apparatus that resonates at frequencies capable of altering human brainwaves. This ability to influence minds from a distance has intrigued neuroscientists and worried parents in equal measure. Their physical prowess, on the other hand, is attributed to a specialized musculature and streamlined body, evolved to navigate the icy depths with minimal effort. Throughout history, the Kalapalak have used their abilities to maintain their eerie legend. Ancient Inuit accounts tell of entire villages paralyzed by the creature's hum, allowing the Kalapalak to snatch children without resistance. More recent anecdotes include reports of modern-day Kalapalak humming their way through beach parties, causing temporary blackouts and mass confusion among sunbathers and lifeguards alike. The Kalapalak's reproductive strategy is shrouded in mystery, much like their existence. It's believed that they engage in a form of parthenogenesis, where females reproduce without the need for a mate. This theory is supported by the consistent appearance of Kalapalak offspring without any observable courting or mating rituals unless you count synchronized humming as foreplay. The life cycle of a Kalapalak consists of several stages. The juvenile whaler stage, where young Kalapalak practice their humming. The adolescent screecher phase, marked by awkward vocal changes and rebellious swimming. And the adult humdinger stage, where they reach full vocal potency and hunting efficiency. As Kalapalak mature, they undergo significant developmental changes. Juveniles start with a soft, almost endearing hum that gradually deepens into the chilling, hypnotic resonance of an adult. Their skin, initially a pale green, darkens and becomes more textured, providing better camouflage among the algae and seaweed. By the time they reach adulthood, Kalapalak has mastered the art of the hum and developed the physical attributes necessary for both hunting and scaring the daylights out of anyone who ventures too close to their aquatic lairs. The transformation of a Kalapalak begins in the early years of its life, typically marked by an inexplicable craving for seaweed and an unusual ability to hold its breath underwater for long periods. It's said that juvenile Kalapalak, or whalers, experience a sudden shift one summer's night when the moon is full and the tides are just right. Witnesses claim that the young ones develop a peculiar greenish hue, much to the confusion and horror of their human parents who were previously unaware they had been raising a mythological creature. 
The metamorphosis of a calipalic is a sight to behold, preferably from a safe distance. Over several weeks, the whaler's skin thickens and turns a more vivid green, blending seamlessly with the surrounding algae. Their hair, previously manageable, grows unruly and long, a tribute to centuries of underwater hairstyling challenges. During this period, they also develop elongated nails, perfect for underwater combat and impromptu manicure sessions. The most startling change is their voice, which deepens into the hypnotic hum that defines adult calipalic. Upon completion of this metamorphosis, the calipalic emerges as a fully-fledged humdinger, equipped with the physical and psychological tools to terrorize seaside communities. Their skin now has a tough, almost leathery texture, protecting the harsh underwater environment. The transformation is said to end with a final, eerie hum, signifying their readiness to join the adult ranks in their haunting endeavors. The calipalic brain is a marvel of evolutionary adaptation, with unique structures that set it apart from both humans and other aquatic species. One of the most notable features is the enlarged amygdala, which experts believe is responsible for their heightened emotional resonance and ability to generate that spine-chilling hum. Additionally, their brain boasts an extensive network of neural pathways, enabling rapid processing of sensory information from their underwater surroundings. At the core of their neurological prowess lies the psionic cortex, an area of the brain dedicated to their special abilities. This region is particularly dense with neurons and glial cells, allowing for high levels of synaptic activity. It is within this cortex that the calipalic's hypnotic hum is generated, a phenomenon that continues to baffle neuroscientists. The psionic cortex also plays a crucial role in their ability to navigate and hunt within the murky depths of their habitat. The neurophysiological processes of the calipalic are both complex and fascinating. Their brain operates with a unique blend of electrical and chemical signals, optimized for underwater living. The process begins with sensory inputs, sounds, vibrations, and even electromagnetic fields being rapidly transmitted to the brain. Once processed, these inputs trigger a series of psionic pulses that amplify their hum and enhance their hunting capabilities. This intricate system not only supports their survival but also fuels the legend of their hypnotic powers, making the calipalic a subject of both fear and scientific curiosity. The Calipalic's genetics have perplexed scientists, not least because of their ability to integrate genes from their environment through a process known as horizontal gene transfer. This remarkable mechanism allows the Calipalic to absorb and incorporate genetic material from the algae, fish, and even unfortunate humans that come into contact with them. The result is a genetic mosaic that grants them an extraordinary ability to adapt to their surroundings effectively making them the ultimate evolutionary chameleons of the Arctic waters. Among the specific genetic traits acquired through this process, the most fascinating is their bioluminescent capabilities, borrowed from deep-sea organisms. This trait not only aids in their hypnotic hunting hum, but also provides a natural flashlight for navigating the murky depths. Additionally, their skin's chlorophyll-like pigment is a direct result of gene transfer from marine algae, allowing them to blend seamlessly into their environment and photosynthesize light for energy, a handy backup for those long, sunless Arctic winters. The role of viral vectors in facilitating these genetic changes cannot be overstated. Viruses, often seen as nature's genetic delivery service, have played a pivotal role in the calipalic's evolution. By hijacking the genetic machinery of their hosts, these viruses introduce new genes that are then incorporated into the calipalic's DNA. This symbiotic relationship has turned the calipalic into a walking, humming repository of genetic innovation, with each viral encounter adding a new chapter to their evolutionary saga. Our investigation into the Calipalic has unveiled a creature of staggering complexity and adaptability. From its ancient lineage and enigmatic transformation process to its unique neurological structure and genetic adaptability, 
the Kalapalak defies easy categorization. It stands as a testament to the wild possibilities of evolution and the enduring power of myth. The existence of the Kalapalak challenges our understanding of life and evolution, suggesting that nature's ingenuity knows no bounds. If such a creature can exist, with its blend of myth and biological marvel, what other secrets might the natural world be hiding beneath its icy exterior? The Kalapalak also serves as a chilling reminder of the thin line between myth and reality, and how folklore can reflect and inform scientific discovery. Future research should focus on capturing and studying a live Kalapalak, preferably without ending up as a cautionary tale ourselves. Detailed genomic analysis could further unravel the mysteries of their genetic adaptations and provide insights into the mechanisms of horizontal gene transfer. Additionally, understanding the neurological basis of their hypnotic hum could have far-reaching implications for both neuroscience and the entertainment industry. Finally, an interdisciplinary approach combining folklore studies and biology could offer a more holistic understanding of how creatures like the Kalapala continue to captivate and terrify across generations. The Enigmatic Dear Woman, Unveiling the Mystery of the Shapeshifting Spirit. The Dear Woman myth is deeply rooted in the traditions of many Native American tribes, with stories passed down through generations. She is often linked to fertility, nature, and the wilderness. Among the Sioux, Ojibwe, and Muscogee, the Dear Woman is a cautionary figure whose appearances signal both beauty and danger. Her ability to shift between a woman and a deer mirrors the duality of nature itself, nurturing yet wild, alluring yet perilous. While there is no scientific evidence to suggest the Dear Woman is a biological entity, her myth may be inspired by ancient understandings of nature and animal behavior. In an absurd twist, some fringe theorists propose that paleogenomic studies of prehistoric deer DNA might reveal a hidden chapter of human-animal hybrids. These scientists, often seen with tin foil hats and holding seances with deer antlers, claim that the deer woman is a cryptid whose roots lie in forgotten genetic experiments by ancient civilizations. Despite the lack of credible evidence, these theories persist, adding a layer of intrigue to the Deer Woman story. The Deer Woman has significant cultural importance, often serving as a moral figure warning against infidelity and disrespect towards women. She is also a symbol of the mysterious and untamed aspects of nature. In many tales, Men who mistreat women or disrespect the natural world find themselves seduced by the dear woman, only to meet a grim fate. These stories have been shared around campfires and in hushed tones, reinforcing societal values and respect for both the environment and each other. The dear woman's influence extends into modern times, where she has become a symbol of feminist strength and environmental awareness. Satirically, one might imagine her as the ultimate nature conservationist, patrolling forests and rivers to ensure that humanity remains in check. With a darkly humorous twist, some modern environmental groups humorously invoke the Deer Woman as their unofficial mascot, threatening litterbugs with a visit from this shape-shifting enforcer of ecological balance. The Deer Woman myth is deeply rooted in the traditions of many Native American tribes, with stories passed down through generations. She is often linked to fertility, nature, and the wilderness. Imagine a time long before Netflix, where the Deer Woman served as primetime entertainment around campfires. The Sioux, Ojibwe, and Muscogee tribes all tell tales of this enchanting yet ominous figure who could either bless a harvest or ruin your day by transforming into a terrifying deer creature right when you're trying to impress a date. While there is no scientific evidence to suggest the Deer Woman is a biological entity, her myth may be inspired by ancient understandings of nature and animal behavior. Enter the realm of paleogenomics, where today's scientists, perhaps bored with studying mundane human genomes, have turned their attention to deer DNA. Although no one has yet found a gene labeled 
shape-shifting deer woman. Some researchers speculate that ancient shamans might have just had a really good sense of humor and a knack for creative storytelling. The deer woman has significant cultural importance, often serving as a moral figure warning against infidelity and disrespect towards women. She is also a symbol of the mysterious and untamed aspects of nature. Picture this. A rowdy young man in a Native American village, disrespectful and reckless, suddenly finds himself face to face with a beautiful woman who then morphs into a deer with a vengeance. It's enough to make anyone reconsider their life choices. These tales weren't just for laughs. They were powerful narratives that reinforced societal values and respect for nature and women. Fast forward to today, and the dear woman could easily be imagined as a mystical forest ranger, ensuring people follow the leave no trace principles with a supernatural twist. In her human form, the dear woman is described as a stunningly beautiful woman with long, dark hair and enchanting eyes. Her charm, however, comes with a peculiar twist. She sports hooves instead of feet. This anatomical anomaly raises fascinating questions. One might imagine a bustling marketplace where she tries to blend in while inadvertently causing a commotion with her clopping hooves. Meanwhile, in her dear form, she transforms into a graceful yet elusive creature, capable of vanishing into the forest like a master of hide and seek. Such features surely make her the envy of every fashion designer aiming for a unique twist on traditional footwear. The Deer Woman's anatomy shares intriguing similarities with other mythological shapeshifters, such as the Celtic Selkies and Greek Nymphs. These beings also enjoy the luxury of dual identities, flitting between human and animal forms with a finesse that would put the latest magic tricks to shame. Whether it's selkies slipping out of their seal skins or nymphs frolicking between the human and divine, the dear woman's unique blend of hooves and antlers aligns her with an esteemed lineage of mythical shapeshifters. Perhaps there's a secret school of transformation somewhere, where these creatures perfect their craft. What sets the dear woman apart is her seamless ability to transition between human and deer forms, symbolizing her connection to both human society and the natural world. This unique trait, often confusing social events, illustrates a deeper, more profound harmony with nature. Imagine her attending a formal gathering, only to discreetly morph into a deer for a quick exit, avoiding awkward small talk and escaping with a flick of her tail. Her ability to straddle both worlds, one with high heels and the other with hooves, embodies a balance that keeps both humans and nature perpetually intrigued. Contrary to what one might expect from a mythological being, the dear woman does not belong to any structured society of her own. She is frequently depicted as a solitary figure, leading a lifestyle that even the most reclusive hermits would find impressive. Picture her living in a forest cabin with no neighbors, no gossip, and no need to attend endless community meetings. Her interactions with humans are on a one-on-one -on -one basis, often leading to rather awkward social encounters. It seems that the dear woman's idea of socializing involves a lot more clopping around and a lot less small talk. The dear woman's behavior is as unpredictable as a GPS navigation system with a vendetta. Her dual nature allows her to oscillate between nurturing and vengeful. She can be the forest's motherly guardian, offering guidance and protection, or she can channel her inner wrath if someone dares to disrespect women or nature. This unpredictability makes her the ultimate wild card. Imagine someone cutting down a tree, only to be greeted by a deer with a disapproving gaze and an eerie sense of imminent retribution. Her temperament embodies the wild spirit of the forest, where one's actions can quickly lead from receiving a helpful tip to being unceremoniously transformed into a deer's next meal. As a solitary spirit, the deer woman operates independently, without any governance system or social hierarchy. She answers to no one but her sense of justice and morality, making her the ultimate free spirit. There's no council of mythical beings she must report to, 
no bureaucratic red tape, and certainly no annual performance reviews. Her sense of justice is as idiosyncratic as her ability to morph into a deer, guided solely by her personal code. One might imagine her as the ultimate arbiter of woodland disputes, issuing judgments with a flick of her tail and an enigmatic glance, ensuring that both nature and humanity adhere to her whims. The dear woman's abilities are the stuff of mythological legend and interspecies confusion. She boasts a remarkable talent for shape-shifting between a stunningly beautiful woman and a graceful yet elusive deer. Picture her at a masquerade ball, dazzling everyone with her beauty, only to make a dramatic exit by transforming into a deer and leaping out of a window. Her enchanting powers aren't just for show. She uses her beauty and grace to captivate and occasionally mislead unsuspecting humans. It's as if her superpower includes a built-in charm offensive, leading wayward souls into the wilderness with promises of eternal love, only to leave them bewildered and occasionally drenched in a pond. Her shape-shifting prowess is attributed to her spiritual essence, allowing her to transcend the mundane boundaries between human and animal realms. This fluidity is less about mastering a magical art and more about being incredibly in tune with both the natural world and the whims of her mystical nature. If you ever find yourself lost in the woods, chances are the dear woman's ability to change form isn't just an impressive trick. It's a cosmic joke at your expense. Her enchanting abilities are similarly linked to her deep connection with nature. One might speculate that her beauty is merely a byproduct of her ability to negotiate with forest sprites for the best seasonal looks. Historical accounts of the dear woman wielding her powers read like a series of dramatic, albeit slightly farcical, episodes. Legends tell of her punishing unfaithful men or those who dare to damage nature. In these tales, she's not just a passive observer but an active enforcer of moral codes often appearing at precisely the most inconvenient moments. Imagine being called out for infidelity during a romantic dinner, only to have your date turn into a deer and leave you standing in shock. Her appearances also extend to offering guidance or protection to women, transforming into a benevolent deer guide who ensures they avoid harm or simply find their way back from awkward social gatherings. The dear woman's reproductive methods are cloaked in an enigmatic veil of folklore and whimsy. Legends hint at her capacity to mate with humans, resulting in offspring that embody her dual nature. This notion raises fascinating possibilities. Imagine a family reunion where one relative sports antlers and a fondness for forest grazing. At the same time, Another exhibits an uncanny knack for disappearing into the woods at inconvenient times. This peculiar reproductive strategy could be the ultimate form of genetic diversity, blending human practicality with deer-like agility. Such a lineage would surely lead to an interesting array of family dynamics, including a sudden interest in woodland-themed fashion and an inexplicable urge to communicate through rhythmic hoof-tapping. The life cycle of the dear woman is as elusive as her shape-shifting abilities. Existing primarily as an ageless spirit in folklore, her life cycle stages are less about the traditional aging process and more about her mystical transformations. From enchanting humans to dodging the occasional forest ranger, her existence oscillates between human and deer forms, reflecting different facets of her ethereal life. Perhaps each transformation signifies a new chapter in her timeless saga, akin to changing outfits for various social occasions. One might ponder whether her dear form is her version of a casual Friday look, while her human form is reserved for more formal, yet equally elusive, engagements. The dear woman's powers and appearance maintain a consistent allure throughout her mythical existence. Her shape-shifting capabilities and enchanting presence are unwavering, akin to a timeless beauty regimen that never goes out of style. Her transformations are less about physical development and more about responding to human behaviors. If her appearance does shift, it's likely a sophisticated adaptation to the antics of those who cross her path. For instance, 
If you're particularly disrespectful to nature, don't be surprised if she makes her next appearance with a pair of particularly menacing antlers and a disapproving glare. Her developmental changes are thus a reflection of the chaotic, unpredictable interplay between her timeless essence and the world's ongoing follies. The transformation process of the dear woman begins with subtle, almost imperceptible changes that could easily be mistaken for a trick of the light or an overindulgence in forest-themed cosmetics. Early signs of her metamorphosis include her eyes taking on a more animalistic appearance, which might cause a startled observer to question if they've accidentally wandered into a wildlife documentary. Her feet also begin their transformation into hooves, creating an odd juxtaposition of elegance and practicality. Imagine walking into a room and noticing your hostess's heels have mysteriously morphed into elegant hooves, all while she casually discusses the latest trends in antler accessories. It's as if the dear woman is preparing for a woodland fashion show with each incremental change. The metamorphosis of the dear woman is described as a swift and effortless transition between human and deer forms. This process is so seamless that it would put even the most practiced stage magician to shame. Picture a grand ballroom where, in the middle of an elegant waltz, your partner suddenly morphs into a graceful deer. The change is so fluid that one might wonder if it's a special effect gone wrong or if they've unwittingly become part of an avant-garde performance art piece. Her ability to shift forms with such ease underscores her deeply mystical nature suggesting that her shape-shifting is not just a physical transformation but a poetic embodiment of her connection to both realms. Upon completion of her transformation, the dear woman embodies the perfect fusion of human and deer characteristics. In this final form, she stands as a living symbol of her dual connection to both the natural and human worlds. Her appearance in this form is both enchanting and disconcerting, blending human grace with the untamed elegance of the deer. It's as if she's the ultimate expression of nature's whimsy, strolling through the forest with a composed demeanor while sporting a pair of antlers that would make even the most seasoned woodland creatures pause in awe. This completed transformation highlights her unique role as a bridge between the human world and the untamed wilderness, embodying the spirit of both in a single, mesmerizing package. The dear woman's brain structure is a marvel of mythical neuroscience if such a field existed. Her cerebral architecture likely features a highly specialized arrangement, optimized for both shape-shifting and enchanting feats. Imagine a brain where the typical gray matter is replaced with an intricate network of magical neurons and fairy tale synapses, designed for maximal shape-shifting efficiency. This brain likely has the equivalent of a VIP lounge for its psionic cortex, where sensory perception and manipulation are honed to a degree that would make a brain surgeon's head spin. It's as if she possesses a neural network that was custom-built for magic and woodland charm, bypassing the need for traditional human limitations entirely. The dear woman's psionic cortex is the neural equivalent of a spellcaster's wand. This area of her brain is responsible for her enchanting abilities, allowing her to influence human perception and behavior with a mere flutter of her eyelashes or a delicate tilt of her head. If you've ever found yourself inexplicably drawn to a stranger who turns out to be a dear woman hybrid, you can thank her psionic cortex for the irresistible allure. It's the kind of brain function that would make Freud rethink his theories as she can bend reality with the subtlety of a forest breeze. Her cortex seems to be tuned to the mystical frequency of bewitch and bewitch again, with side effects including impromptu woodland dance-offs and sudden cravings for acorn soup. The neurophysiological processes of the dear woman's brain reflect her unique ability to straddle the realms of human and animal instincts. Her brain functions like a sophisticated biologist's field guide, seamlessly navigating between human emotional complexity and deer-like agility. It's as if her neural pathways are split between pondering existential dilemmas and planning the perfect escape route from a predator. This dual capability allows her to respond with the finesse of a woodland creature, 
while maintaining the strategic cunning of a seasoned enchantress. The result is a brain that juggles the instinctual and the intellectual with an effortless grace that might make human neurologists wonder if they've been missing a crucial ingredient in their research. If one were to peer into the bizarre world of speculative genetics, the dear woman's transformation might be attributed to a fanciful process known as horizontal gene transfer. This hypothetical mechanism would allow her to exchange genetic material between species. Think of it as the ultimate in biological networking. Imagine a scenario where the deer woman casually swaps DNA over coffee with a deer, or perhaps at a forest-themed mixer. This mythical horizontal gene transfer would explain how she seamlessly integrates traits from both humans and deer. If this were scientifically plausible, it would revolutionize our understanding of cross-species genetics and potentially start a new trend in evolutionary biology. Mixing and matching genes like their haute couture. The deer woman's genetic makeup is purportedly a marvel of evolutionary engineering, featuring traits that would make any biologist green with envy. Her genes supposedly grant her regenerative abilities and heightened sensory perception, allowing her to perform shape-shifting feats that rival the latest in sci-fi special effects. It's as if her DNA has been meticulously designed to facilitate rapid transformation and high-definition sensory experiences. Imagine a genome that includes both the regenerative prowess of a mythical phoenix and the keen senses of a woodland creature, making her not just a shapeshifter but a living, breathing evolutionary experiment. In this whimsical genetic landscape, viral vectors might be the unsung heroes behind the dear woman's transformative powers. These hypothetical viral agents would act as biological delivery systems, facilitating the seamless integration of genetic traits and enabling her body to undergo swift transformations between human and deer forms. Picture viral vectors as tiny, overzealous postal workers delivering DNA packages with such efficiency that they make standard gene therapy look like snail mail. Their role in her genetic makeup would be akin to having an internal biotech lab, allowing for a fluid and rapid shift in form that leaves conventional science scratching its head and wondering if they missed a memo about the latest advancements in mythological biochemistry. The Dear Woman, a shape-shifting enigma in Native American folklore, emerges as a figure of both wonder and warning. Spanning the traditions of the Sioux, Ojibwe, and Muscogee, she encapsulates themes that could make any nature lover or folklore aficionado swoon. This complex spirit, part alluring beauty, part woodland guardian, serves a dual purpose, cautioning against the perils of infidelity and celebrating the untamed splendor of nature. Her myth is not merely a tale of transformations, but a reflection of humanity's perennial struggle with the wild and the divine. If her existence were real, she'd be the star of an otherworldly soap opera, blending morality tales with supernatural intrigue. Should the dear woman's reality be confirmed, an unlikely but thrilling prospect, it would fundamentally upend our grasp of nature's boundaries. Imagine the headlines, Humans and deer now officially interchangeable. Deer woman revealed as new eco-superhero. Her existence would redefine our understanding of the intersection between the human and animal worlds, perhaps leading to a new era of interspecies diplomacy, or at least some awkward but charming social encounters at the forest edge. She represents a bridge between humanity and the wild, a living reminder of nature's mystery and power. Her presence would challenge us to rethink the lines between civilization and the primal forces that lurk just beyond our city limits. To further unravel the dear woman's myth, future research might delve into comparative folklore studies, examining how similar shape-shifting entities appear across global traditions. What, for instance, do these figures reveal about our collective anxiety over nature's unpredictability and our moral shortcomings? By exploring these stories, scholars might uncover deeper insights into the human psyche and our relationship with the supernatural. If nothing else, such inquiries could lead to a more nuanced understanding of how legends like the Dear Woman continue to haunt and inspire us, 
whether through their cautionary tales or their sheer fantastical appeal. Perhaps next, we'll be investigating whether her fellow mythical creatures are holding secret conventions in the woods, plotting their next big crossover event.